chosen without thanking the Jewish people. For centuries, the Jewish culture has been under attack, facing anti-Semitism around the world in various ways of hate. Despite the pain that they have been put through, the Jewish people have always worked hard to, ri to rise above the assaults and respond with resilience. Their strength has resulted in countless innovations from the Jewish inventors, scientists, doctors and many others who did not allow the hate to stop their creativity and their passions. Whenever Israel was born, <coughs> almost around 60 years ago, it was a barren country with no natural resources, little water and more than half its land a mass in desert. The only thing the new country was um, going for, had going for it was the natural creativity of its people. Israelis have turned their country into an oasis of technology and innovation. With the most startups per capita worldwide and the third highest number of patents per head, Israel has become one of the leading players in the world of high-tech innovation, innovation, attracting international giants to its shores. From health breaking from health breakthroughs to technology, agriculture, the environment and the arts, the country's innovations are transforming and enriching lives everywhere. Israel today is playing a significant role in some of the most important challenges facing our planet. So here are just a small, and I mean small, section of some of these people that I've chosen to share with you. You may know some of them, and some you may not. So the first one is, this is called a, a rewalk exoskeleton. First shown in the TV program Glee, when a paraplegic whose name is Artie Abrams got up and walked for the first time. Wow. He did this with a very real product, the rewalk, which is that. It is the brainchild of electrical engineer Dr. Amit Gopher, who was left with a, as a who was left a quadriplegic after an accident. The device includes leg braces for motorised joints and a backpack battery system, enabling paraplegics to walk and climb stairs without assistance for twelve hours. Wow. It's amazing, eh? Yeah. It's so amazing. Awesome. Okay, the next. Mm. Jerusalem Brainwaves, which is where this company is, developed a revolutionary, painless, non-invasive, deep electrical magnet system, stimulation device for the brain that can ease addiction, depression, autism, and a range of other wow. brain disorders, including Alzheimer's disease and schizophrenia. Wow. Now, how about that? That's In awesome. Jerusalem! Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, and then hang on. Um, next one is this company makes a thing called a baby sense. It's a no touch, no radiation device divide, designed to prevent crib or cot death. Developed by the Israeli company High Sense and released to the market in 1992. The device monitors a baby's breath and movements through the mattress during sleep. An audio auditory and visual alarm is activated if breathing ceases for more than 20 seconds or if the breathing rate slows to less than 10 breaths per minute. You just wouldn't think about see that stuff, eh? Hey? Right. Um, some 200 million people suffer from the progressive lung condition, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. <coughs> And many face hospitalisation several times a year. I've seen this one of those with bronchiolitis. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> okay. um, Akiva, which is in Haifa, is Israel, obviously Israel based. And that's where this Deep Breeze company has developed an innovative medical device that will allow COPD patients to be monitored remotely from home. 
It can also image, diagnose and monitor patients suffering from asthma, conge congestive heart failure and other conditions affecting the lungs. So I reckon that, just yeah, the, the technology yeah. is amazing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the people. Yeah. yeah. You all know what that logo is. You all know what that is, so me. No. Okay. Windows NT and XP operating systems. These are two of Microsoft's most popular operating systems and were developed primarily where? Israel. In Israel. <laughs> Microsoft has had a strong presence in Israel for many years. It has two research and development centres and here's, here's a layer, layer in Israel that employs 600 people. And that place, here's a layer, is a city on the northern part of Tel Aviv. Last year Microsoft Israel announced that 13 new products were being developed in, at its offices while in March, Microsoft Israel announced it is setting up its first ever incubator in Israel. Wow. Yeah, so those are just some of the newest stuff. I'm going, I'm going back here. You know the, the, the Nobel Peace Prize? Mm -hmm. This prize has six categories. Chemistry, medicinal um, physio physiology. Yeah. Economics, physics, peace, and literature. The recipients all come or came from varying backgrounds, which include surviving the Holocaust, being hidden in children's orphanages and homes. Some had to flee to avoid persecution, and others had significant anti-Semitism they had to deal with. At least the, we all know what anti-Semitism is, don't we? Yeah, okay. Um, at least 170 Jews and people of half Jewish ancestry have been awarded this prize. Accounting for 22% of all individual recipients worldwide between 1901 and 2005 and 37% of all American recipients during this period. The number of Jews receiving Nobel Prizes has been the subject of some attention. Do you know who that is? Okay, his name was Benjamin Disraeli. Mm. He was among the outstanding Jewish believers of the 20th century. He was a great Jew, he was a great believer, he was a great politician and he was a great writer. Through his writings, both fictional and political, he vigorously supported the cause of his fellow Jews everywhere. Disraeli never sought to hide his Jewish origins. He was born in London on, um, in December 1804 and died there in April 1881. His family re from Spain in 1492 and settled in Venice. His grandfather left Venice in 1759 and immigrated to London. Um, on, in July 1817, he and his brothers and his sister were baptised into the Christian faith. At the age of 21, he produced his first book, Vivian Grey, a satirical novel. Shortly after publishing his first book, he travelled for some time to Italy, Greece, Turkey, and Syria, um, Syria France, Germany, Spain, Malta, Albania, Egypt, and then, as it was, as it was, emphasise that, <laughs> Palestine. His visit to the Holy Land, and especially Jerusalem, the city of a king, made a deep impression on him and inspired a vision of the rebirth of Israel. The book Tancred, one of his later books, reveals Benjamin's great love of the Holy Land. His political career began shortly after his return from that Palestine's, Palestine visit. He was appointed Prime Minister in 1868 and again from 1874 to 1880. This is the highest position in the government corresponding to that of President of the United States. In 1876 he was named Earl of Beaconsfield and two years later was invested with the full power of independent action 
on behalf of the government to the historic Berlin Prom Congress. At the Congress, he won the admiration of the assembled diplomats of Europe. Because of his conduct and influence, Russia was compelled to modify the terms of her treaty with <coughs> Turkey following the Russia and Turkey War, and Romania was compelled to grant full religious, religious freedom to the Jews. On his return to England, Benjamin could justly claim to have gained peace with honour. Some of his actions as Prime Minister greatly changed not only the course of British history, but also that of the entire world. Since then, much of Benjamin's work has since been nullified by events like the two world wars. Had it not been for his actions in diplomacy and debate, all the Near East might have already passed under total Russian domination. This lady's name is Nellie Sachs. She was born in Berlin, Germany, in 1891 and died in 1970. Because her protective parents didn't encourage Nellie to pursue a profession, she lived a very sheltered and introverted young woman and never married. In 1940, she fled to Sweden with her aged mother, mother with the help of a friend, catching the last flight from Nazi Germany to Sweden the day before the day before, she was to report to a concentration camp. Wow. Now, I think that's quite significant. Mm. Nellie was a German-Swedish poet and playwright. In 1966, she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Wow. His name, Shimon Peres. Mm. His family fled Poland in 1934 to escape persecution and headed to, that word again, Palestine. He studied agriculture and joined the Zionist party leader, David Ben-Gurion. Shimeon was given the responsibility of securing military equipment for Israel from ab abroad. Later he organised Israel's nuclear programme and is regarded as the father of Israel's atomic, uh, atom bomb. He received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1994. He was born in Poland and died in Israel where he was the foreign minister in Israel. His prize motivation was the efforts to create motivation in the Middle East. In the winter of 93, secret negotiations between the Palestinians and Israelis took place <laughs> sorry <laughs> took place in the Norwegian capital of Oslo. They re resulted in the so called Oslo Accord signed in Washington that year. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand that. They have the agreements done in Oslo mm -hmm. and have to be signed in Washington. Anyway, anyway, Shimon was in charge of the negotiations on the Israeli side and in the autumn of 94 he shared the prize with his own Prime Minister <coughs> Yitzhak Rabin, Rabin and the Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Henry Moissan was born in Paris in September 1852 and died in February 1907. His mother was of Jewish descent, his father was not. He was a French chemist and pharmacist who won the 1906 Nobel Prize in chemistry for his work with fluorine. He was one of the original members of the International Atomic Weights Committee. This is Carl Landsteiner, Steiner, Landsteiner, was an Austrian-born American born in 1868 and died in June 1943. He took up the study of medicine at the University of Vienna and wrote his doctor, doctoral thesis in 1891. While he was still a student, he published an essay on the influence of diets in the composition of blood. He was a biologist immunologist and a physician. He distinguished the main blood groups in 1900, having developed the modern system of classification of blood groups from his identification of the presence of agglutinins in the blood. I don't know if I said that right, sorry. And in 1937 identified with two other people in the 
the rhesus factor, which is all to do with blood again, enabling physicians to transfuse blood without endangering the patient's life. And again, with still two other people, discovered the polio vaccine in 1909. In 1930, he received the Nobel Peace Prize for medicine or physiology. That's all one category. Mm -hmm. So to find out m more Jewish people um, you, who have won the Nobel Peace Prize, just Google it. Wow. There are many, mm -hmm. many, and you can just choose what wow. you want. Mm -hmm. I have, I've, as I said, just randomly chosen a few. Okay. Now here are some other inventions. Morish Mishtum, a Brooklyn candy shop owner, and his wife Rose created a stuffed toy bear in honour of... Do you know the story? Theodore. I'm sure you will. Theodore Roosevelt. Yep, Theodore mm. Teddy Roosevelt. Oh. Oh. It all began when Roosevelt went on a hunting trip in 1902, but failed to locate a single bear. His assistants reported, reportedly cornered and tied a black bear to a tree for the American president to shoot. A big game hunter, Roosevelt refused to kill the bear because it would be unsportsmanlike. Whoa. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Couldn't some people take a leaf out of his book today? Yeah. According to, the, the story is according to the National Park Service. A political cartoonist turned the fateful hunting trip into a sketch, which is this one. <laughs> when the Mitch Tums saw the cartoon, they decided to make a new toy and call it Teddy's Bear. The invention was widely popular. Meanwhile, across the ocean, a German, fa German family named Steiff <laughs> created stuffed toy bears with shoe, button eyes and embroidered noses. Eddie, Eddie Goldfarb, if I pronounced it right, was another um, Jewish inventor who provided lots of laughs, mm. laughs with his yakety yak talking teeth. <laughs> In the 1940s, an ad for a false teeth holder called a tooth garage amused him. Really? <laughs> he imagined a pair of dentures chomping, sput um, sputtering down the road and parking in their proper place. <laughs> I could just see it, that was so cool. That image inspired Goldfarb to create a wind-up toy known as Chattering Teeth. When his gag chompers de um, debuted in 1950, the packaging read... What does it say on that? You can yak it Incredible yeah. talking teeth. Yeah. yeah. The image is... Uh, hang on. Uh, it says, amazing, they walk, they talk, they're alive! <laughs> Even as a youngster in Chicago, Chicago, Goldfab was inventing toys and creating action figures from the cardboard inserts and laundered shirts. Laszlo Byro, oh, yep. a Hungarian Argentine inventor, came up with the idea for the modern day ballpoint pen. He worked as an editor for newspapers in Hungary and had a problem with ink from fountain pens, which smudged and took a long time to dry. Meanwhile, he noticed the ink in newspaper printing presses didn't smudge and dried quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. He tried putting the same ink in a fountain pen, but couldn't get it to flow into the tip. So Laszlo Byro worked with his brother, a chemist, and developed a new tip with a ball that moved freely in a socket. I think he's actually holding one, is it? No. Oh, no, it's not either. No, it's a cigarette. Yeah. yeah. The Byros presented the first working ballpoint pen at the Budapest International Fair in 1931. Wow. That's Edwin Land. He's a co-founder of the Polaroid Corporation made it possible for pictures to be taken and developed almost immediately. In 1947, he demonstrated the Polaroid Land camera, which could produce a finished print in 60 seconds. Land's photoco photographic pr process soon found many applications in business, science and the military. Before he died in 91, the American had received more than 500 patents for his innovations in light and plastics.
Credit goes to the engineers at Motorola's Israel Research and Development Center for coming up with the original cell phone technology. From the tool that guards your mobile identity to a new keyboard solution, Israeli expertise keeps your phone from getting bigger yet staying cutting edge. That's according to Israel 21C. This is a non-profit media organization. Most of the technology in your f mobile phones can be traced back to the yeah, Israel yeah. engineering. Wow. Camera, uh, this is about camera phones. Do you remember life before smartphones? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're trying to think, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Baby boomer, Philippe Kahn, which is this guy, was born in Paris in 1952 to Swedish immigrants of modest means. The birth of his daughter in 1997 triggered the birth of a new technology. Khan wanted to take a picture of the baby and send it to friends directly from the hospital. While in the waiting room, he succeeded. He fired up his computer, wrote some lines of codes, synchronised them with his Motorola phone and digital camera and, the created, and created the world's first camera phone. Wow. So that's where it's, you blame him for it all now. Selfies. Yeah. Now this one here, Sam Bourne. That was Sam Bourne. He was known as the Candy Man. The novelty business appealed to a candy maker born in 1891 who received his education in Ukraine at the city's rabbinical school. When Sam Bourne's family moved to France, he landed a sweet job in a candy store and earned the business. In 1910, Sam immigrated to the U.S. and was responsible for many innovations, including the technology to produce chocolate sprinkles. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And the hard coating, chocolate coating used for Eskimo pies. Oh, no. Which I was told today, uh, you can't, can't get them anymore because they're not allowed to be called Eskimo pies. And he was given the keys to the city of San Francisco in 1916 for inventing a, a machine that mechanically inserted sticks into lollipops called the Born Sucker Machine. <laughs> <laughs> he began to manufacture candy in 1923, calling this company Just Born. Because the products were so fresh, he earned a spot in the Candy Hall of Fame. Okay. Yeah. Now you're going to know this one. <coughs> um, you, know, you may not recognise the guys, but you know what I'm going to talk about. These two guys? Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Giggle. Giggle. I'm going to say that would be Larry Page. A rally? <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, it it go. No. And the other one, this guy, I think his, his, his name is Sergi Brin. Now Silicon Valley billionaires developed Google as computer science graduate students at Stanford University. Page envisioned a world wide web search engine that could crank Sorry, that would rank faster links based on how often other pages link them. Bryn helped turn the idea into PageRank, the foundation of Google search. The product went live on Stanford's network in 1996. Among many products Google produces, developed Chrome, the browser operating system for the Google Chromebook computer. In addition to this, Google is leading the development of the Android operating system, which is used on all Android phones. Wow. So it's like saying, if you haven't got an Apple, yours is an Android. Chromebooks are what a, a lot of primary schools here get children to use. So that's where it's all come from, yeah, from these guys. They've got them to blame for that. Okay. 
It was the Jewish American physicist Theodore Mayen. Mayen, no, hang on. Mayen. Mayen. Yeah. Who first fired a laser on, in May 1960. However, his work was based on the theoretical foundations first established by. Do we know this? You'll know this guy. Albert Einstein, oh, in 1917, who was also Jewish, yeah. just in case you didn't know. Today the laser is widely used in everyday devices such as bar excuse me, barcode devices and DVD players to more specialised tools used to mark targets or measure speed. D pacemakers and defibrillators um, these inventions are quite literally lifesavers and a huge accomplishment in the world of science and health. For anyone suffering from a health condition, these inventions were the medical miracle that was so desperately needed. It was the Jewish American cardiologist Paul Zoll who helped the pi to pioneer the inventions of both the pacemaker and the defibrillator. In recent years, genetically modified foods have caused a lot of controversy due to the harm they can do to our health and bodies. However, uh, genetic engineering has shown that it might be a promising way to treat cancer. In addition to this, genetically modified organi organisms are used to mass produce insulin and to help crops become disease resistant. In 1992, the Jewish American scientist Paul Berg created the first exhibiting genetic recombinant uh, recombination DNA molecules, which is, of course, that what that's what that DNA. is, which is responsible for our modern genetic engineering that is being done today. Do you know this guy, Irving Berlin? Mm. He was born Israel Isidore Bielan in Russia in May 1888 and is known as one of the most enduring songwriters in American history, despite not knowing more than the basic principles of music composition. Over his career, Irving wrote more than 3,000 songs and produced 17 Hollywood film scores and 21 Broadway scores. He is best known for his hit song. Do you know what it was? Was yeah. White Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Which, until the release of Elton John's song "Candle in the Wind," fifty years later, was the recognised best-selling music single in any category. Yeah. Within his life, Berlin went on to co-found the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers founded his own music company and donated millions of dollars in royalties to organisations like the Army Relief, Army Re Emergency Relief and the Boy and Girl Scout Movement and more. Okay. Mm. You know this guy here? Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Yep. Born in 1926, mm. he went on to become one of the most popular actors and comedians in his time. He was born to a family of actors and he became his and began his acting career at age 16. At the age of 20, he began working closely with singer Dean Martin mm. and by the late 1940s, they had both risen to national fame. Lewis went on to star or co-star in hit movies like At War with the Army, The Bell Board, The Bell Boy, The King mm. of Comedy and more. By the end of his life, Jerry Lewis was a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, a recipient of the United States Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service. Throughout his life, Lewis also raised more than $2 billion for his Muscular Dystrophy Association charity, Jerry's Kids. He passed away in his Las Vegas home at the age of 91 in 2017. Wow. Now, Pardon? Was he Jewish? Yes, mm. yes he was. Yes. These, these are all, all they're all Jewish all, yeah. or Jewish companies. Mm. Wow. And I don't know whether you're gonna know this guy. His name is Stan Lee. That might help. 
of us grandkids and kids that I know, or may know. Best known for his comics, Stan Lee was a Jewish American comic book writer, editor and publisher, and was the former president and chairman of Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know, yeah? yeah? Lee created what fans refer to as the Marvel Universe. With the help of two other men, Stan created the Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, and the X-Men. They also created Doctor Strange and Marvel's most successful superhero who is... Anyone know? So, a star, um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. Lee received several awards for his work, including the National Medal of War, um, Arts, mm -hmm. awarded to him on 17th of November, um, 08. He also founded the Stanley Foundation in an effort to promote literacy and diversity in 2010 before his death in November 18, 2018. Mm. Each and every one of these innovations have had a profound impact on our world, from mind, body, health and culture. Where would our body be today without these incredible Jewish thinkers who pub Push themselves to think beyond the limits of what was currently possible during the time on here on earth. Jewish minds have created many more inventions that touch our lives. These are some of the many other inventions. Do you remember the word pr processing computer? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's one of them. You know, when you go into the, um, the airports and you check in, use a check in system, mm -hmm. it's also, and guess how long that's been around for? Since 1955. Mm -hmm. Cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. it's also invented by, um, as in Israel they grow. What do you, when do you think video games started? Oh. What year? 1966. I mean, yeah, the, the remote control, stainless steel, the cholera, polio, and bubonic plague vaccines, jeans, we have the Levi jeans, lipstick, contraception, the long playing record, color television, uh, you ladies might know this one, the ready to wear clothing industry. Yeah, okay. The shopping cart, the supermarket's carts. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bigger the better, Karen. <laughs> Porn <Instead> shops. <laughs> Porn shops, Prozac and Valium. Um, chemotherapy, kidney dialysis machines. The wow. optic fibre cable. Drip irrigation. Scale model electric trains. Here's one for you guys. The Citroen car. Really? Mm. Yay! And miniature, <laughs> miniature pineapples. Now, I, I don't think we've seen them here in New Zealand, no. but they're just a smaller version of what the ones yeah, we know. Yeah. yeah. No, no, we want that fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the list will go on and on and on. While there are lots, oh sorry, in, in Genesis 12, 2 and 3a, while there are lots of Jewish people living outside of Israel, Adonai was and is still blessing his people. Location doesn't matter. He chose the people from any, every other nation in the world. While his covenant started with Abraham and would bestow blessings on Israel, it would reach much further than that. The best part of his covenant is in Romans 9.4. This is not only for the Jewish people, wherever they live, but also for all who believe in the one and true name, Yeshua Messiah. Now that's worth celebrating. In Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3, As all believers should do at all times and for all things, thanking the Lord. Including Amen. the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. So that's it.